I know you gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. Who you gonna call? Kill a replica. A replica of what? A ghost trap? What's going on, everybody? How you doing today? So here I am. So many windows around. Fort McLeod, Alberta. And I'm doing the filming locations for Ghostbusters Afterlife. How much did you love Ghostbusters Afterlife when it was released in July 2020? Everybody loved Ghostbusters. What a great, great sequel. Oh, you haven't seen it? It didn't come out. That's right. That's right. Thanks to COVID-19. It didn't come out. So this is the first time I'm attempting to do filming locations for a movie that has never, that I've never seen, and that you've never seen. I'm just going based off of the trailer and some publicity shots, and I'm gonna find as many as I can. It was shot all in Alberta. Even the New, the New York scenes were shot in Alberta. Yeah. From what I can tell, the movie is about Spangler's daughter, so Harold Ramis' character's daughter. She inherits his farmhouse somewhere. I suppose, I guess maybe it's supposed to be in upstate New York or somewhere, maybe across the country, because it looks like they've got a lot of, um, what do you call it, shots? You know, valley shots of like Grand Canyon type stuff. So maybe Southwest, they inherit a farm, and Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things is the grandson, and then there's a granddaughter, and they find well, from what I can tell from the trailer, they find the ghost catcher, Ecto-1, the car, and then it goes in there. You don't see... You don't see Bill Murray in the trailer. You don't see Sigourney Weaver, Ernie Hudson, Dan Aykroyd, but they're in it. But one of the shots is definitely right here because this theater is prominently featured while in two scenes of the trailer, of the two and a half minute trailer, or right here. So there you go. So when the kids are driving the Ecto-1 around, you see that probably that gets hit by something. They say, I believe they're trying to bust ghosts and they're shooting at that. There's a shot of it there. And then a shot of them coming down the road here. We get another glimpse of the Empress in the background. I believe that's Canada's oldest movie theater, I think. I was gonna dig more deeper into it than I thought, no, 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 no. no, this is just about Ghostbusters Afterlife. So this is the first part. This is what we got so far. Let's see what else I can find from the trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife. It has a gunner seat. So when they're driving the Ecto-1 around, this is still in Fort McLeod. Look, you see that in the trailer. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. I was just about to leave Fort McLeod and because I wasn't sure, there's a few scenes of them driving around in the Ecto-1 in, in the trailer. And none of these, no, nothing looked familiar to me. Like, well, I mean, like from being here the first time ever. But then I was looking at my rear view mirror and I saw that building right there behind me. And I thought, I saw that. Thank you, truck. I saw that in the trailer. So yeah, the kids got out to uh, figure out that it has a gunner seat right here. So the Ecto-1 was parked right where my dirty ass rented Hyundai is. <laughs> How dirty that is, that's been through the ringer. Can't wait to return it. But yeah, right there. All going off the trailer. Now I'm pretty sure that, because they, they drive past the United States Post Office, which will be another building dressed up, but I think that's in a different town because I've pretty much done the two main streets here in Fort McLeod and have not been able to find that building. But I have a feeling, the way I know myself, I'm not going to give up. Just one second, I gotta take my mask off. I have hit the gold mine in terms of Ghostbusters locations. Now, right here behind me, see a liquor store. Right on this corner is where a lot, a lot of action takes place in the trailer. Let me flip the camera around and show you. I'm going to tell you a little bit how they did it. So when the kids are driving the Ecto-1 around, you see that building very briefly, but it matches up to what's on camera, especially that thing right there. Excuse my finger. That's what she said. Right. I can't, I can't see it now right there in the middle of that white vent you can see it and then they transformed this building into a diner and they put it in it made it into a drive through and they shot inside and out and from the 
later part of the latter part of the trailer. Well, no, mid part. You see that? Some of our liquor store. It's bicycle liquor store, but that's the same building you see. Shots are so quick. It's so hard to keep up with, but. There you go, there's some more from Ghostbusters. So right there, out the window. Right there. And this is the diner from Ghostbusters Afterlife. I can't believe I found this. Don't get caught alone, oh no. Bicycle, Main Street and First. What if it was first and first? Kramer would be very, very upset. How can two streets intersect with each other? I must be at the nexus of the universe. Something like that. All right, let's see what else I could find from Ghostbusters Afterlife. The quest continues. It's a quest. It's a quest for fun. I'm gonna have fun, and you're gonna have fun. Bustin makes me feel good. Well, I have absolutely no service where I am right now. But from memory, now this one I read online. And from memory of what the, in the trailer, which is like a three second scene, I think it's the younger sister who's walking towards a Shandor mining company. And it was this bridge that's in the background that you see a little tiny bit of, and they put a sign up saying Shandor mining company. Now, of course I didn't screenshot the picture, and I can't, there's literally no service for like 20 minutes either way. Not been able to get service. I can't watch the trailer again and again. I should have just like downloaded it. But it's one of these angles here where they put the, and I'll show you, because you do definitely see these mountains in the background, this specific mountain range, but I can't remember which one. But yeah, this is part of the trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife too. It's very brief, and I believe, I think it's the younger sister that you see in this shot, but you see this metallic bridge, and the sign would have been up above it. And I believe it's that mountain range right there that is very prominent hills are huge and right up this uh through here actually it's where they filmed part of brokeback mountain and yeah this is a crazy little area this is almost i mean like i read online it's like a ghost town over there nothing much going on out here but yeah they transformed this part into the shandor mining company and i'm not sure the angle something like this i'm just going by memory is it like that it's hard to get it yeah, this is seen in the film probably. And apparently all the fields around here I read online. This is where they filmed uh, Finn Wolfhard's character uh, driving the Ecto-1 around. They would have done, yeah, they did this in, a, I guess, what was it, summer of 2019? So a little nicer weather to drive a car through all these fields. Because these fields are frozen solid. Here we go. Okay, so it's really early in the morning. I'm about to catch a plane, but okay, the film takes place in Oklahoma. I said, I, this is, so this part is going in the middle of the video. So at the beginning and the end, I probably say it's taking place somewhere out near the Grand Canyon or something. It takes place in Oklahoma. Because I found an article by the CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and they mentioned that this school was used for the classroom scenes and the exterior as well. So I looked on the trailer, I thought, well, there's a classroom scene, but I can't really see inside the school. And then, and the school's closed, I saw a brief scene where you see Paul Rudd beside this school. You see that very distinctly in the background. So I thought, well, I'll drive up there really quickly in the freezing cold. It's minus 17 Celsius this morning. Do you know how cold that is? It's really cold. Did you know the Ghostbusters song? It was originally uh, Columbia, the studio approached Huey Lewis and asked him to do uh, a song like a uh, theme song for that sounded like I want a new drug. He turned them down. So then Columbia gave Ray Parker Jr. They said, well, why don't you do it? So they gave him a copy of the, uh, the film with I want a new drug playing in pivotal scenes. And he wrote a song called Ghostbusters, which by the way, I did always say I love that song. I love the, the theme song for Ghostbusters. Uh oh, Ghostbusters, I want a new drug sound exactly alike if you listen to them. <laughs> Like really close, so Hugh Lewis sued. He won, and there was a non like you couldn't talk about it. Like the lawsuit, he won. Columbia and Ray Parker Jr. had to pay him, but he couldn't talk about it. Hugh Lewis, of course. Hugh Lewis, big blabbermouth that he is. We all know that. 
he in 2001 on vh1 wrote a thing i uh, wrote i uh, know said you know talked about the lawsuit so then ray parker jr sued him and he won so now i don't know who owes who money or who got what money or who even owns the song it's a great song ghostbusters out of life was filmed at this school oh god Well, yeah, so that's a little trivia about Ghostbusters. Why in the freezing cold did I bother to tell you that right now? I don't know, my mouth has now frozen shut. Don't worry. Oh, God. So in the trailer, you see Paul Rudd right about here. And you see that light and see where the discoloration there? That's how I found it's this angle right here that they used. And that bell, the bell was red, I think. But there's another bell over there. But yeah, right here, Paul Rudd would have been. Very briefly, and I guess when the something or other attacks him in the parking lot, it would have been this parking lot right here that I'm in, but I can't tell from anything in the background. Now let's go see if we can see this uh, inside the classroom. It's early morning, there's nobody, the schools are closed down, so it's okay. But I don't know where the exact classroom is. Not a chance in hell am I gonna try and find it walking around in the freezing cold. But yeah, right here, this is where they filmed. And there's another location in this town that they use the, uh, I think just the exterior, I'm not sure about the interior, but I'm going to show you the exterior of it. It's the sheriff's office, but it's not in the trailer, but while I'm here, and I'm not going to get out of my car. Right here. Wow. It's so cold. Have I mentioned? Ghostbusters is a song. Hugo Lewis. I want a new drug. Okay, bye. So it's a little warmer in my car doing this, but that's the, um, what was used as a sheriff's office. Now, it's 1112 Railway Avenue here at Crossfield, and I believe they filmed inside as well. Now it's a diner, and on the right is Crossfield Automotive. I'm very confused. But, yeah, I believe that's... Uh, that looks like a sheriff's office. That's what they used. And uh, if you look to the right, that building there, that was the supermarket used in Brokeback Mountain. But that's something else I'm getting to. My hand's shaking because it's so cold. And I'm Canadian. I should be able to deal with this. But this is the level of cold that's not humanly possible. I don't under... What's well, humanly possible? It's not right. So here, this is the water tower that's looking out over the town that it's supposed to take place in. And you can see the, it's got the same, um, right around like the, where the star is there, the metal going around and it's orange. And it, it does have a shot of that building right over there. I was gonna drive over to it, but I'm just gonna stay here and show you. See that building right over there? You see that in the obvious drone shot or crane shot. I'm guessing it's a drone shot. And I have my drone with me, but I have a feeling it's so cold, my drone is just going to freeze and drop to the ground. But yeah, that's the uh, water tower that you see in the uh, trailer. So this town here, and you can see mountain ranges in the background there. This town here is supposed to be the town, but they use so many different towns. Now I'm going to do a quick drive and see if I recognize anything from this town. But otherwise, we got to go to Calgary for the last location. But yeah, so the town of Drumheller is supposed to be the small town. Oh no, I've got another location before that that I found. The small town of Drumheller here is supposed to be the town. But they use so many different small towns. Like a combination of a bunch of them. I found it. I knew I'd, I knew I'd find it. What's wrong with me? Why do I care? <laughs> it's like a puzzle thing. I, I think I've already said it. I don't know. I'm so loopy at this point. But it's getting to the point of crazy. But it's like a giant puzzle. Hey, it could be worse. I could have a drinky palm or a drug problem. Although everybody thinks I do because of the way I act, but I don't. But this is what they use for the post office. The Ecto-1 comes right along here and you see these three buildings in the background. I was looking for this location for so long in every small town I've been in. And this is the one that matches up finally. Here it is. There you go. So the Ecto-1 comes right along there. Building completely matches up. That same building in between with that framing there and that tall part there and the curved part or the well, octagonal part. Yeah, just change the windows up. And that was the United States Post Office. The Ecto-1 would have been coming right along here and then it would flip down to this street in the um, trailer where the Empress Theater is that I already showed you, which is like a thousand miles south of here. <laughs> Not even nowhere. <laughs> and before McLeod. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's the building I've been looking for, thinking I was gonna, never going to be able to find it. And I found it. Uh, who cares? I do. A little bit. A little bit. What are you doing out here in Somerville anyway? Honestly? Well, I'm asking myself the same question. I'm not in Somerville. I'm at Horse Thief Canyon. And the kids, it looks like in the movie, the teenagers 
Drive, this is so icy. Drive right along here. And this is where they shot those scenes. So I'm assuming that it's supposed to take place somewhere in the Southwest to make it look like Grand Canyon-y is where this movie, I can't, I don't know if I've repeated myself a million times or not, but because I filmed a lot of this last week, these locations are everywhere, but they come right along here. Now, it looks like it's probably this way. This is, and the car kind of drove around right around here. There's a fence. But it's a steel fence. And I believe in the movie there was a wooden one. This is not uh, fun. But it's like this icy to walk across. Uh, like a glacier I guess I'm on. I'm assuming. And the top of the mountain. Look at this. It's absolutely amazing though. Wow. So yeah. This is. Um, I'm walking very, very <laughs> slow for this. But yeah. They have one quick shot. And so I'm assuming that it's going to be the, the farm, uh, like where it all takes place. It's supposed to be some southwest town because this is this looks exactly like the Grand Canyon, sort of. Especially on that side more. And now I'm going to show you this side, which makes no sense. But I'm not getting any closer. I'm not getting... Okay, I got a little closer. Look at that. That looks... I mean, hey, here we are. Canada's Grand Canyon. Who knew? I didn't know. Wow. Horse Thief Canyon. Beautiful, 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 Jesus Christ. Please just work. Thank you. <coughs> oh, and finally we've made it to the last location from the first scene. Well, one of the first scenes in the trailer shot right here. So in the trailer, it looks like they're being evicted from a New York apartment. And that New York apartment is right here. And how I figured this out with the help of my friend Matt, who lives here in Calgary. He just lives down the street. Where are you, Matt? Why aren't you here with me? He showed me a picture that of Ivan Reitman, Jason Reitman, and the cast... And he saw this building in the background, right there. That house, those two trees, and that building right there. So, flip it around, and there's this building. And you see their feet and their legs walking right out of this building right here. It's called the Anderson Estates. I believe this is a famous building. Or, you know, I, know, I don't know. I'm not here for the history of the building, but it looks like a really nice building. But they have a shot. Oh, yeah, the Anderson Apartments. Unique layout and it's eight shape design. Da, 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 da. Right here. They have a shot of them coming out of the apartment, and you see this right here. And a bit of that right there. So that's all you can see in the trailer, which is kind of silly. But in that shot of them sitting on the set, you see that building. You see just a bit of that with that blue, blue and white, very distinct there. And those two trees in that uh, behind the scenes uh, picture. And that's that done. All right, so that's it for Ghostbusters Afterlife. That's what I can find so far. Maybe next time I'm in the Calgary area, I'll find some more. Maybe the movie will be out. It'll be a little bit easier to find more uh, locations because this was difficult. But I hope you liked it. I'm excited for Ghostbusters Afterlife. I'm sure you are too if you're watching this video. And if you are watching this video, something I never say because I always forget. Like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Scott on tape. Peace out. Who are you going to call? Derek. Why would you call Derek? Derek doesn't know anything. Call Ghostbusters. It's Derek. It doesn't matter. All right.